Hey, and welcome to another StarCast TV tournament. We have the new World Star League here. Uh, with me today, casting, it is Diggity. Diggity, how are you today? I am doing fantastic. I think we just, for, for people wondering what's going on in our timeline, we just finished up the New York uh, City land. And Raz and I were hanging out. And we're like, man, we should cast together soon. And here we're getting the opportunity. So I'm extremely excited about this uh, set of matches. Yeah, I'm really happy to cast Diggity. We had a great time getting together. It was awesome. Couldn't wait to do it. So we, we got at it right away. What a star-studded lineup, though, today, Diggity. I mean, what a pleasure to cast some of these names. Light, Motive, Shine, and Beast. I mean, crazy. Light considered by many to be the best player out there right now. Definitely one of the top three Terran, without argument. You have Motive, who's a really solid Protoss player. A little bit weak uh, versus Zerg play. You have Shine, the Bisu killer. And then you have Beast to round it out. I'm expecting, yeah, some fun matches. And it'll be, I think the most exciting part of this is seeing pro-level innovation on completely new maps. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have the pros doing it, you know, they're coming up with something very crafty. They've thought it through, they're getting ready. And I'm excited to see Beast play because he is a player who does get very aggressive. So we'll see what he's come up with on these maps because he does love to get all in. He does love low drone counts and loves to get after it. But starting off, we're going to be seeing Motive versus Light. And should be an exciting one. Yeah, definitely the favorite is going to be Light. I mean, you know, he does some crazy stuff. He's innovated many matchups, and TVP is no different. He had the Valkyries going for a little while, kind of counteracting shuttle style. Cloak Wraith to stop the shuttles. So we'll see what he pulls out today. One of the few Terran that's very okay with. I'm just going to split the map and sit here and defend. Yeah, he's one of those guys that, I mean, he's he's the Terran's Terran. He is good. He's got the solid macro style. Out of all of the Terran that are playing recently, he's one of the few that's not going hyper aggro. It feels like fantasy, uh, even light style play recently has just been throw everything in the kitchen sink at your opponents. But light is one of those guys who will sit back. He'll go into a standard macro match to win it out. Yeah, and today's format will be the same as Group A. We'll have two best of ones and then best of threes, they're out to decide the two top players from the group. Diggity, thoughts of, I think we all know that Light is probably the favorite here, but of the three remaining, I think we have a lot going on. Anyone that you think will come out as the top? So Light, I would definitely expect to come out in the top position. Motive's going to have a hard time today, I think. he's First of all, he's facing off against Light, who, again, an incredible player. Maybe the new maps will throw him off a little bit. Maybe that'll open up some opportunity. But past that, I favor Shine a little bit over Beast. And if Shine ends up taking on Motive, we know that Shine has some incredible uh, ZVP. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely can get crazy anyway between those two players. I want to point out Diggity, best of one ZVZ with Shine versus Beast to start off in that, in that second game. Who knows? ZBZ, wild matchup, anything can happen. Absolutely. You know what's funny? I, for a period of time, I felt like these days, okay, ZBZ is one of those things that's a little bit more macro oriented with uh, some shifts in meta, but it just seems like recently with a couple 12 hatches, 11 hatches, things like that, it has become one of those things where it can go any way. But it looks like we've got game one set and we're going to hop right into it. So starting off in the upper right hand corner, if none other than light as the brown Terran. And in the bottom left, the purple Protus, it is motive. Now diggity for me, what strikes me pretty quickly is the map here is one of the more known ones, Vermeer. I think this definitely favors someone like light. You know, he has a lot more experience. Well, not a lot, a lot more experience, but I think he has really good strength in this matchup. So having experience on the map will give him, I think, an extra edge in this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Light, 
it's hard to go on a four player macro oriented map against a guy like Light who favors that style and then expect any other result than a victory from him. And I don't want to say it's a foregone conclusion, but I think Motive's going to have to do something creative here if he's expecting to come out with a W. Yeah, I think anytime there's a best of one scenario, even if a player has so much more ability compared to you, there is that hope, right? Like if you come out with something tricky, uh, you can maybe catch him in the best of one and move on. But so far, everything seems to be status quo. Pile on down at eight, no probes on the map. So we'll see what he opts for after this. We are putting gateway down, so no 12 Nexus. No 12 Nexus, so not gonna go for that early greedy build. I, I will be interested to see if Motive opts to go ahead and do that early skip of Dragoon range. That seemed like that was an extremely popular meta in, I don't know, a season and a half ago, and all of a sudden it's really come out of favor. One thing is I do want to see him build that initial Zealot regardless because I've seen a lot of Protoss try to skip that recently and I've seen a lot of Terran punish it and Light is definitely one of those guys who can punish it. Yeah, Light here going for a 12 gas, so standard play for him as well. But yeah, I do like the early Zealot, especially with a lot of the gas list that we have been seeing in the TVP meta. Ton of gas list bans. And if you're not pressured with that Zealot, Terran gets away with murder and you can be behind a ton of workers. Yeah, unfortunately, I feel like this is not the... So in this contest, there's the mix of the old maps. We've got Vermeer, Retro, and Polypoid. And then we've got that new, the new maps coming along. you got Sandstorm, Neo Luna, Jungle Storm Champion. And I'm guessing that Motive probably... I, I don't know if he got a decision about how this was going to stack up, but I, I'm guessing he probably wanted to face Light on one of the more newer maps rather than one that he's, that's been on the ladder, that's been well explored and that he honestly is the key innovator on. It looks like he's going ahead and dropping that factory rather than just going for a single marine and expansion here. Yeah, that definitely has been also very common and we'll see what motive has intentions here. Cause you're right, the range list was something that was like almost every game and then Terran started pressuring. So Protoss went reverted back. But now I've been seeing a lot more of this 19 Nexus where right now I haven't seen him use his gas. So he may be just pumping out the one goon, no scout. You scout with the goon and the probe at the same time and drop your Nexus at 19, which it looks like we're going to have, which is definitely a good ego boost because it gets the Nexus down so much faster than the command like, center. And like being very aggressive here, he moved out an SCV and an initial Marine. Either I, I assume that's to maybe catch a probe out of position or maybe catch some early sniff uh, of yeah, I, I assume to get some sort of probe and deny some information to start. In the meantime, he's got that initial vulture being created. He's already got, it looks like the cadre of Marines hanging out on the front. Looks like motive, however, scouting bottom right. He should come across light second. I don't know that he's going to be able to glean a lot of information without support from that Dragoon, though. Yeah, I agree. He's not going to be able to see much. Light has his Marines in a forward position to make sure that he's getting scouting information. I understand why Motive is not moving out. He's worried that the Vulture could be on the map depending on the build. And if it gets in early and you don't have a Coon there, it's pretty much game over from all the damage it will do. But Light, look at this sneaky guy getting his SCV around. Might even get in the base. Let me see. Can we block for Motive? Very good to deny information for Motive there. Well done. Got the kill, looks like that probe cycling back around. The Dragoon trying to chase down that Vulture, not able to get to the natural expansion. So Motive just going to sit back, and we got a starport already in construction here from Light. Yeah, so it looks like he wants to try to punish this with that drop play. Um, you know, I think drop play for Terran gets a little bit tricky, right? You invest a lot for this drop ship. Got to get six, seven probe kills, though. Can't get anything less, or else you are behind. I feel like it ends up playing really, really strong when Protoss are playing particularly greedy and trying to take a quick third rather than continuing with the gateway count or getting uh, Dragoons out in the field. And that has been something that has been meta recently is just try to play it light on gateways first. But look at this, Vultures and Marines moving out for light cross map already. And keep in mind the drop is going to follow this up. Madman Mad man here. Not a normal timing that you see by any stretch to see three Vultures and three Marines go under pressure Protoss this early. Let's see what he can get done with this. Yeah, I don't know if this is a winning combo, but it might be considering how spread out these Dragoons are. You've got three Dragoons versus the two Vultures and three Marines. That's a winning combination. Typically, it looks like the mines are planting, but Light, yeah, pushing up, trying to engage with this, has some mines down, and it looks like he's occupying the Dragoons long enough for the DPS of those Marines to get on top of the Dragoons, and because there was that spread earlier, he's pushing them all the way back into that natural expansion. Wow, really love this here. Pushing him back, getting some picks. Oh, we just heard a mine. It definitely connected. Dragoons are hurt. Trying to run this one away because a Vulture and four Marines will definitely kill a Dragoon off. 
Interesting, uh, yeah, the Dragoon trying to micro its way against those four Marines. More Vultures making their way out. Now, keep in mind, there's that counter drop behind this. And I will be interested to see how this plays out, because keep in mind, those Dragoons aren't going anywhere. And you get a good amount. Usually, I feel like, okay, the more spread out you can force your Protoss opponent, the more you can get Dragoons out in open space and out on the map, the more likely you're going to have success with the Vulture drop. Here, we've kind of flipped the script where the, the Dragoons are really pinned into the base right this moment behind the threat of Vultures and Mines. And instead, uh, instead of being on the map, they're going to be in a better position to defend this drop. Yeah, and we just saw the Nile of the Third, super annoying for Protoss there. And to your point out, Diggity, we have Dragoons on the map clearing Mines and not back <laughs> home, man. They're oh, clearing man. Mines. Light the Maestro, I mean, look at this guy. So There's one Vulture being down. dropped, the natural expansion has already got two pro kills working on the third right there, and we're getting more pro kills in the main. So it was relying on Motive to be overly aggressive and rather than bothering to clear... Uh, so that was just genius play, absolute maestro play like you said. You had the single Vulture at the 6 o'clock location that was interrupting pro, uh, probe movement that direction, and the rest of the Dragoons moved out and just overextended to check that third at the, what do I want to call it, the 8 o'clock position. And so Motive was mostly out of position, which allowed for a, what I'm going to call pretty successful Vulture drop right there. Yeah, a lot of damage going down. We probably lost six, seven probes, and we got to take them all off of the natural to fight the Vulture. So we lost mining time and probes. We see that light is actually up three workers now, despite having a later command center. And going right into three factory, man, to kind of pump out some units and probably going to push Tegas third. And feeling very comfortable, didn't even need the bunker, as a decent amount of siege tanks out in the front. This time, Motive being a little bit more cautious, even though he did take out that dropship, is a little bit concerned about a follow-up, but this time only dedicating, it looks like, a single Dragoon with that Observer to go ahead and clear mines. But Vultures look like they're sweeping around towards that natural expansion and managing to catch another probe, as Motive was hoping to, I assume, go take a third, or a fourth, I should say. Yeah, Light has just been all over the place with these Vultures, man. Super annoying. Tasking Motive to move around the map just like he's moving around. And we see he's going to amp it up again by adding another dropship in there. This time we do have Dragoons at the 6 o'clock location. Might intercept that. Light has been really, really diligent at moving those forward Vultures to make sure that the way is clear up to this stage and make sure that it's an open drop. This time I'm not sure that he's going to have that luxury, but the Dragoons have moved out of the 6 o'clock location right this second, so it looks like that dropship is going to sneak by, I think undetected, it looks like the probe just got the edge of it, but did Motive react in time? There's a single Dragoon, that's not going to be sufficient to stop some of these probes bleeding off at the natural expansion. Yeah, probes continuously going down, having to be pulled, super annoying for Motive, definitely hurting his eco, definitely stunting him as he goes forward here, and we're going to pick off maybe this worker probe, can he get out? It cannot. Able to get the kill there, but at least for Motive, he's got this 6 o'clock base, uh, starting to construct. We'll see how Light plays it from here because he's seeing a Protoss that's just taken a lot of expansions and he has not gone very Dragoon, uh, dragoon heavy behind it. So now the five siege tanks of Light moving oh. out mid-map gets two easy kills out on the front. Oh no, Diggity, that is devastating right there to lose those two Dragoons right away. Has to be careful with this Reaver. Good job. Needs it to kind of hold back this push because I believe Light added a fourth, maybe even a fifth factory, man, and he is pushing down here and we decided to take a fourth base. So that means we were not making more Dragoons. So I would, the chef's kiss here would be a, a Wraith or something. Okay, so he's got the Goliath alongside to help negate that shuttle. But I really worry about Motive's ability to stop Light from barreling him over right this second. Let's see how how quickly the reinforcements are able to get up and get some mine planish, because here's the problem for Motive. Even if he manages to hold a direct push, he still has to worry about this forward position that opens up vultures to flood in to that base. Yeah, I think we only have four, maybe five gateways down for Motive. Oh, and he sees that the base is still going there. But we have oh, we sniped two observers. So annoying, man. So annoying. He's not going to be able to get any of these mines out of the way. Got to wait till he pushes in. And I think Light's going to push right into that third base. Looks like he's still running off four factories, he's, or four gateways, I should say. He's tacked on two additional gateways. Is moving up, maybe hoping to get some Reaver damage here. But now you have those Vultures sidling in, and this is going to take a lot. Well, able to get a couple pros, but certainly stopping all mining here at that 8 o'clock base. Yeah, I mean, this is a fantastic push from Light. He's really weakened and softened up that shuttle there. He is on five factory pushing in. The big issue also with this third diggity, other than the probes and pulling them, is losing the Nexus and four pylons. He's got to recreate all that to make sure he's not supply blocked. So he's going to have to get ahead of that so we can try to push. 
Motive looking to break, or is he going to try to make a counter here? I think this is a threat of a, can a counter, maybe to try to force Light to draw back. The thing is, is Light, ooh, getting that shuttle stranding at those two Reavers on the ground, that means that that's not going to be much of a threat at the front, so the Dragoons being sent back. Is he going to try to slow walk it regardless? No, okay, now drawing those Dragoons back. One thing for Light, though, is, is he's not grabbing a third, and that he's just continuing with this pressure, so it looks like he really wants to just go ahead do continuous movement, get favorable. Look at him setting up behind this artifact. Although it looks like Moto might have an opportunity to engage from both directions. Light maybe pressing a bit too far. Siege tanks getting bled out. Zealots on top of the siege tanks. Great shots from the Reaver. And it looks like Moto has defended. So even though he ended up losing that fourth base overall, he still had, he's still up a base. So he's still in a solid position. He's got a lot of troops on the ground. And if he gets a move on, he might even be able to threaten Light's third. Yeah, and as we say that, I believe there's a dropship that's picking up some vultures down there on the bottom. I saw them all run down, but I think that Light is in a fantastic position. If he can just sit up sit up on his third now here, get some vultures, some mine, and tanks, it should be okay. Up to eight gateways now, or seven gateways now for Motive as well. Probably looking to do some counter pressure. Yeah, Motive looks like we're getting yeah, two additional factories out for Light, so he's not going to pick up off that gas pedal. SMB is now moving out towards that additional base. Motive finding some siege tanks that are sieging on that wall, but swinging around, hoping to get maybe some sort of dash attack, maybe pick off a couple SCVs while he's reestablishing that fourth vultures, redropping of that natural expansion, once again, disrupting that economy. And here, a move in from Motive. Is he gonna be able to pick off the siege tanks? He's got zealots on that rear, and now there's no siege tanks defending that third. There's some Goliaths. Look like they're not quite able to pick off that shuttle, and Light all of a sudden now in a bit of trouble as Motive going to go up. He's got the three bases. He's going to establish that fourth. He's got the gateway production behind this and light might have overextended here. Yeah, massive damage there for Motive being able to force a lift, reset the, the siege tank count and be able to get most of his Dragoons out, right? Didn't lose a lot of these gas units. So he is in a pretty good spot right now, and especially because he's putting his fourth back up right now. He did save his probes to the natural there. So he is looking really good. I think what light has been doing is he's been keeping that dropship in between that natural expansion and that third and just dropping it on occasion, maybe relifting those vultures here and there just to be a nuisance. But right now, Motive in a great situation. Light is very, very short on siege tanks, so he's gonna have to rely on some sort of miracle vulture play to get some damage done. Right now, Vulture's able to sneak in before that cannon's finished. There's only two Dragoons to defend. One of them has been taken out by mines. So Light doing a great job of making the best of a bad situation, able to pick off some additional probes to really slow down Motive's economy. However, Motive has opened up a 34 supply lead. He's got an economic advantage, and now he's starting to fill in with some of those high Templar that really, if he can get that energy behind uh, his back, he can really start shredding Terran armies. Yeah, and he can really snowball his eco lead here as well, right? We all know that Light's SCVs are both at the natural and the main, so probably very heavy on the natural. So if he can get a storm drop back there, he can kill probably a significant, significant amount of Light's overall workers. I'm surprised that Light is posturing out here, Diggity. I mean, oh no. Oof, okay. I was like, that he's posturing out here because he does not have that many units. And yeah, we saw that Motive is on like 7 8 Gateway. Yeah, in particular, he seems very, very light. I mean, he's at the 14 minute mark, and I'm only seeing four siege tanks fielded which is nothing, absolutely nothing. This is usually where you want to have a control group and a half. He does have the three machine shops down, so if he can get this third up and running, maybe he can fill in that siege tank count fairly rapidly, but that's assuming Motive's going to give him some breathing room, and Motive, swinging around with a shuttle and another grouping of Dragoons, might have another opportunity. I'm not sure that Light can spread enough to defend both that third and his natural expansion. We're seeing a drop moving in, some vultures in the way, some great focus fire to kill those zealots, but the Psy Storm now becoming a factor. Didn't catch that rear siege tank, but the zealots are overwhelming it on top of that. And right now, Motive, however, doesn't look like he's going to get the best exchange, uh, exchanges. He focus fired along that uh, northern route. He had the defense matrix in the way. The size storms didn't really hit much. And as a result, he's bleeding a lot of troops. Yeah, Light just cleaning this up, man. I don't know how he just won that so heavily. I mean, he is plus two attack already with no armor protest, so he's going to be able to melt those units a little bit quicker. But man, he absolutely annihilated that army. And all of a sudden, in a swing, Light ahead in supply. He's got that third established. It looks like he's just now taking his fourth at that 12 o'clock location, which will put him economically ahead. And he is showing 
where he's about to say he's the guy willing to sit back and macro, he is showing constant aggression. Just feels like all Terrans recently have gotten roided up and they're just raging because, man, they're, the aggression from Terrans lately, pushing forward with, honestly, it doesn't feel like a lot of siege tanks. Nabotov trying to sneak a base in the upper left-hand corner so maybe he can get some refugee stuff going on, but siege tanks are already setting up outside his third. Yeah, man, Ter recent Terrans have been taking some of that Protoss juice, you know? Getting themselves <laughs> all pumped up, ready to go. Taking tips for Quanro these days. It's like, what's true gonna... <laughs> Gonna push, 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 push. Zealots look like they're able to send a few units back. We have a high tempo sweeping in, able to get a size storm, but the the space between these siege tanks by light has been fantastic, where the size storms have been completely negligible. It's just there hasn't been any room to really hit anything except for half a siege tank. More zealots trying to trying to stream forward to defend this, but now a half decent size storm, but there's still all sorts of siege tanks and reinforcements along that back edge with the next sweeping of vultures. I expect this third to fall. Yeah, I mean this is where it becomes really, really difficult. This Terran's on seven factories, eight factories ready. The vultures can reinforce so quickly. So if you're not melting off siege tanks, you're still dealing with the bulk of the army because you're gonna see probably 10, 12 more vultures just come in here time and time again. Votive is relegated to just taking all of his units that are being produced and throwing it at this wall because he can't afford to lose any more uh, mining time, any more bases. He's got to keep that siege tank count low. But in the meantime, Light is continuing to reinforce forward. Now it looks like he's got a bulwark of vultures going ahead uh, and pushing forward. Motive's got that base up in the alternate corner, but I don't know how he's ever going to be able to get probes to saturate it. I agree. There's, there's definitely no way unless he's going to speed shuttle them up there, but he needs these speed shuttles here right now to try to fight. I think we're going to see some zealot bombs now trying to take out as many tanks. Light immediately unseizes and takes them out with no damage going down in his units. Unbelievable, man. Well played. Man, just uh, this is brutal right here from Light. I, just unbelievable strength and poise. The, I'm not even sure that there's anything in those dropships, just maybe trying to feint some sieges and unseizes to try to get something in position. Some Goliaths now moving up, that's going to shove that back. We see probes scrambling mid-map, the vultures finding them, and I think they might see them moving the off the left. <laughs> Zealots sweeping, trying to get something. They are managing to get in that rear siege tank line, but the shuttles are gone. Looks like the siege tanks are getting cleaned up. We've got, what, four Dragoons left versus six or seven siege tanks? That's not a winning scenario. Well, the probes made it. Uh, there's a positive for Motive right now. He got those probes to the top left. Almost got them caught, but I'm not sure there's much he can do from here. I think we're seeing the last bits of pushes here coming in from Light, and he's really going to put a stranglehold on this game. Once he gets down towards that natural, no units can come out, the map is his. And he's on four bases himself now, Diggity, so he is sitting really pretty economically also. Yeah, Light, basically, he's just got an overwhelming economy. He knows it. He knows he can continue to just funnel troops forward, take those spokes as a high ground, and then just melt all of the troops that are being thrown at him in desperation. And that is basically what we're seeing play out right here. I assume the 6 o'clock base, will, we might see one or two additional attempts from Motive to try to breach this line, but using the 6 o'clock, certainly sh it, I'm expecting a GG soon because this 6 o'clock needed to be online running and untouched for him to really stand a chance in this match. Yeah, and we see that Light is now ahead, almost 40 supply. He is just running away with this game now, trying to get some good storms down, but it's all Light right now and he is going to clear this base. And his tank spread is insane, and he is probably going to put himself into the winner's match here in a moment. So it looks like the Reavers, High Templar, Dragoons, trying to swing around. I'm not sure how much energy is behind those High Templar, because I'm assuming they had to field fairly rapidly. It looks like they got a good amount of, of storm out, but that was kind of the last breath of motive right there. As he ends up GGing out of the match, Light takes game one in a very convincing manner. I think that's basically what we were expecting out of this match. I was a little nervous there, though, for a minute digging. I got to be honest. I saw Motive go in, bust the third, reset the tank count. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, is Motive actually going to do this? And then he tried to go back in when light was set up and just wasn't uh, wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to a ZVZ. We're going to have Shine versus Beast. Tell me more about Beast. I haven't seen a lot of Beast games, but it seems like you're pretty familiar with him. Yeah, so a little familiar with Beast, but he, uh, if you remember a couple of ASLs ago, he was the guy who was like four pool in, slow drops, all those types of things were in his bag of tricks, uh, trying to morph lurkers through the back of um, 
oh man, the two-player map with the, the cannon that blocked in the back there. Uh, he was doing a lot of whole crazy things. And um, he is an all-in style player, super aggro. I love Zergs for that. There's something really fun about watching an all-in aggro Zerg. It's just, you know, man, it's just you never know what's going to happen, right? Like, you just don't know what build. If they're willing to put down a five pool or four pool, definitely could get crazy, man. It could just create mayhem. Um, ZVZ, usually he's like a nine pool speed or nine pool into a quick lair type of player, at least from the games I've seen. Not many times is he the Zerg that's taken the 12 pool expansion. Or sorry, sorry 12 patch expansion. So you ready to hop into this one? Let's do it, man. Let's see what these two guys can produce for us. We'll be starting off once again on the good old Vermeer. Starting in the upper left-hand corner as the brown Zerg, we have Shine. And in the bottom left, the yellow Zerg, it is Beast. So right away, Diggity, Overlord advantage goes to Beast. He has his Overlord going right towards Shine, so he's going to be able to get a full scout immediately. Definitely an advantage here, ZVZ. Yeah, whenever you have that Overlord that can get in your opponent's base, and you can see, especially that timing before Spire, you can see precisely how many Zerglings are being created, and you, your opponent doesn't have that information, gives you a huge advantage, because information... In all of the matchups, information is absolutely key, but getting information advantages in ZVZ where you have the razor thin margins of drone, just one drone can win you the game, where two Zerglings can be the difference in a fight that makes the snowball that leads to victory. Having that yeah, Overlord man. and being able to just pick one, you know, being like, okay, see some Zerglings spawning, and especially with the travel distance, now I can build right now, absolutely huge. Yeah, I mean, we always laugh when we watch ZVZ because we're like, wow, that guy made one extra drone, now he's dead. Like, he made one extra drone, he's dead, it's over. The game just ends because it's just, you can't do it. It's it's crazy. Looks like we're seeing, and on top of having Scout, looks like we're seeing a nine pool into gas for Beast. In the meantime, we might see a 12, ha uh, sorry, a, uh, yeah, no, a nine, 12 hatchery upper left-hand corner. Looking at the drone, yeah, that's throwing me off here. Yeah, 12 hatch for, for Shine for sure. And a nine pool gas into lair of speed for Beast. And this is one of those things, man. ZBZ is going to scout him first, see the hatch first. I would be shocked if he didn't just go into speed and try to kill this because so hard to defend. You got to pull drones, try to drill them through to the minerals. I mean, his pool is just going down. Uh, I think definitely, definitely going to be a tough hold here for Shine. It's possible, but very, very, very difficult. It looks like the Overlord is going to be able to at least catch vision of the second overlord to let him know he got spotted and also let him know what direction the zerglings are going to be coming from. Looks like we are seeing a tech delay. The initial zerglings have been produced. They're going to be in flight shortly. But with those initial zerglings coming across the board, you have to pull drones. So it's a difficult defense from Shine because not only do you have to pull drones, but you need to make sure you don't lose too many drones with that defense. And then on top of it, you need to make sure you don't end up losing. You've got to keep uh, that gas running and make sure you don't far uh, fall too far behind in tech in the meantime. Yeah, I feel like if you do hold, this is one of those games that goes into <laughs> spores and gets a little bit crazy. But it's all about this initial hold. If he cannot hold this hatch and he loses it, he is just very, very far behind. Yep. Yeah, let's see if they're nope, just going to cancel it this time. Going to end up. Oh, is he going to end up losing the drone in his main? Looks like manages to sneak it out, drops a sunken colony, but still, this is a lot of mining disruption. In between is now morphing to lair. Now some counter zerglings are out there. Was that a self kill drone right there? No, he sniped one of the links. He was lucky. He got he got one of the links. Okay, sniped got it one immediately. of the links. Yeah. For a second there, with been... that explosion, I was thinking, was that some was that an accidental uh, hit? But it looks like there's going to be an additional hatchery dropped in main, and it looks like we are going to see a transition to probably evolution chamber and spore. It looks like two zerglings for shine did manage to sneak out on the map. That can be at least get some scouting information, be a little bit of harassment, but we're going to have that tech to Mutalisk in not too long here from Beast. Yeah, Beast is going to be able to get right onto me right away. And I think Shine is okay with running down and going past because he has the sunken. Uh, you know, Beast is going to have to make more Zerglings back at home like he is right now to hold this. Looks like he's going to go ahead and drop his in base hatchery. It's going to come up a little. So he's going to have an earlier availability to build the Mutalisks, but. Uh, 
He's gonna have uh, fewer larva to work with. Shine can get aggressive with these Zerglings here. He's at home base, he's got that something colony, so he doesn't have to worry about the Zergling all-ins as much. He's just now dropping his fire as well, but certainly he's gotta do something to catch up to Beast Mule's count. Yeah, I'm wondering if this Ling move out from Shine was able to make Beast use larva so that he won't have those three muta immediately. Right, we see one larva up and the spire's not done yet, so maybe we'll have two. Maybe he'll get that third, but it looks like he's only gonna have two instead of three muta able to be put onto the map. Yeah, sometimes what you'll see players do is, is they'll just all they'll just shove in those zerglings right as they believe the spire timing's happening to try to force some additional zerglings. It looks like Beast is pretty well insulated here though, and able to hold this. It looks like Shine now maybe trying to make shots is bleeding a few zerglings as a result. Beast is still holding. And right now, Beast with a big supply lead. He's up a drone and has, it looks like even more, as far as I can tell, maybe more uh, Zerglings on the ground as well. Yeah, and one of the things right now that he's gonna be able to do Beast if he wants is just pick off the Overlords out here for Shine and supply block them. Even the 100 minerals for each, you know, in this matchup with nine, 10, 11 workers is really difficult. We do see a Sunken going down. So Beast, I guess, wants to hold in his main with the sunken so he can use these muta just to take out drones let's see how many he gets nothing yeah, to this, defend man i think this is going to be game right here because these two mutalists are going to be able to take so many drones out before even scourge are able to take flight so right now we're down to six for shine and plummeting some more zerglings trying to fight we have mutalists holding on that ramp which means beast is going to be able to take this match there's gg well played all together by beast yeah, Beast, really good move there, sending the two up there, um, just taking out all the drones. I mean, that's Zerg versus Zerg, man. You, you had to cancel the hatch. I'm surprised Shine, knowing Beast, didn't expect him to play Nine Pool because he, that's pretty much what he always does, CPC. I'm really excited. I have to say, as far as the winner's match, it is going to be super fun to see Beast go up against Light. Yeah, who knows what Beast might pull out, man. It could be anything. I'm telling you, this guy gets crazy. Could be a hidden hatchery into some kind of uh, three gas Gardra build, burrowed lings, this guy, anything is on the table for this guy. And Light being one of those guys who's been around forever, who's seen a lot of that stuff, it'll be, a, it, this is always the fun, is it's like the, the guy who, who knows it all. Light is, I think everybody will agree, kind of the leader of the Terrans since Flash has been unavailable. He's the one who's producing all the guides. He's the one who everyone's going like, okay, we're gonna copy Light's, uh, we're gonna, Look at what Light is doing and copy him and learn from him. And you've got Beast the coming in here who's just going to razzle-dazzle him and see what he can he's, throw. He's definitely going to do that. I mean, it's definitely going to get wild. All right, I think we're ready for this game. Let's get into it and see what Beast can do if he can bust Light up and take him down in this winner's match and advance to the next round. Okay, starting in the upper left as the red Zerg, we have Beast. And in the bottom left, it is Light. Now Light, before last ASL, everyone said he helped make so many Terran qualify because of his innovations to TVZ with the Valkyries, uh, that strong Valk build that he does. The question is, will he need it here? Or will he just play even extra safe and make sure he doesn't get killed by anything weird? Yeah, there there really is a Terran renaissance right now where there have been so many different builds that Terran, I, I almost wonder if Terran are having trouble simply because there's so many options, you know, how they what the, what they say where infinite options is the same as none at some point, oh, yeah. but it, it does feel like there's just been so many new builds and so many options for Terran to pull out. And this is one of the marquee matchups where there's been a lot of, inf a lot of innovation where we've had Valkyries come into play, where we've had kind of a pseudo mech transitions come into play, where we've had all sorts of interesting stuff happen. Oh, for sure. Three racks into mech switch. Once you get a little map control, the Valkyrie play, just, it's just been just crazy stuff, stuff that over 20, 25 years, units that were never used are now becoming the most prominent units in the matchup. So yeah. definitely wild. And we see that light putting down that depot outside of his base, probably gonna make like, a, it's not gonna be a perfect wall. He'll have like one slot to the left, one opening to the right, but probably wants that for someone like these two may wanna do some type of Ling run by or Ling all in. It'll help him kind of cover some of the surface area. Yeah, defensible. 
and looks like he's going to go ahead and move out with that initial SCV, start scouting. We do see an 11 hatch on the opposite, or I think that might have been 11 hatch on the opposite side from Beast. He's going to go ahead and move his own drone scout out. It looks like that's going to head towards the south, so he's going to be able to approach light, but uh, let's see if he's able to get any sort of harassment. Well, is he? Never mind. Looks like that. Okay, yeah, he is. It's hard to tell sometimes with that path. He's sidling it out to the right as though, but no, okay, he is going to the south. The caster yeah. curse, I tell you, sometimes. Where I'm like, is he moving it out there? Because it looks like he's kind of taking that. He's, he's wandering it just a little bit on that arc. <laughs> he's definitely going left. Then he cuts immediately to the right. You're like, oh, okay, okay. It's whatever. It's fine. <laughs> no it's fine. big deal. <laughs> but yeah, Light, going to send out a second scout here. I think this is key, um, if, especially if you're a newer player. you got to make sure that um, you send out the two so you know if you can put down the command center right away or if you're dealing with pool first. In the meantime, he does have that second marine queued, just in case. He is going to be able to wander up with that SCV into the natural expansion uh, right about now, so he knows that it's safe to go ahead and get that command center building, which he's already got slotted down. Did have the second marine complete, so he's got that uh, the two marines to go ahead and fight off that vicious, vicious drone, which is heading back. In the meantime, it looks like Beast is just setting up for something standard. He's going to hatch Mutalisk, or everything's indicating to hatch Mutalisk up to this stage. Yeah, hey, really strong. We'll see what he can get done. Second SCVs, they high five as they go by to say, hey, you just got the base now. I did my job. So here they go in. Just two Zerglings produced. Do you, what do you know about Beast's Mutalist Micro? Uh, he's he's pretty strong because he does like the two hatch nonstop mass muta style play. So definitely strong. Um, I've had the pleasure of playing him and he snipes all my Templars with one Group of uh, one group of mutilists without even stop moving on turn rate 16. So, uh, they're it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's, okay. it's all looks right. Like you we, know, <laughs> looks like we are seeing the two racks into academy build from light. The and this is looking more standard meta. Yeah, I think he just wants to. I, I feel like when you feel that you're the better player and you're playing against somebody who can get kind of crazy. Sometimes just play middle of the road, like I'm just going to put a standard build, hit my build, do really well. It's a really good mindset to go into it. So you kind of cover all your bases. So I feel like that's probably what Light is doing. Like he's like, all right, go ahead, try something tricky. I'll be waiting for you. Looks like we are seeing that second gas getting grabbed. So I presume, and a drone, I assume moving, I saw a drone briefly moving out. And we'll see if he goes ahead and grabs a third. Academy just finishing. Uh, for light and the Zergling spreading out absolutely everywhere. But if you see that little tick of white that's managed to hang out there at that nine o'clock location, he has managed to sneak a scout out in open field. The Zergling is in the meantime coalescing to go ahead. There's no, keep in mind, there's no Overlord here in position for Beast, so he doesn't have a really good look at the Marine count, so he needs to dive those Zerglings in. But he's building a lot of Zerglings here. Yeah, a lot of Zerglings. I was just going to say that. I'm really surprised to see how many Zerglings he's made. Um, not sure what he's anticipating. If he's looking for a move out, maybe light will come out with. A stim rush, but um, definitely a problem because now if you look at his drone count, it's only at 17. Yeah, so, he's um, playing very light. Five drones only in his main mining. I mean, we're probably going to see two hatch weed all in here. And I love that. So Diggity, he put some extra drones from his main into his natural to make sure it looks like he's saturated a ton. Oh and no, here we go. For the dive, but Firebat's just spawning on the lower zerglings and they got absolutely obliterated and wow that attack went absolutely nowhere and all of a sudden light also going to be able to wander up with this follow-up scv looks like it's getting kind of tacked by that zergling but was able to at least get to the edge and see the continuation i uh, that's really, massive man yeah i don't know what beast can do at this stage if light just seals up and plays carefully and makes sure he doesn't get overwhelmed by mutalisk he should have a, a really nice walk out of this uh, first game yeah, I mean, he didn't really lose many Marines, so the Mutas won't be able to just take down the bio ball that's standing out in the front. Turrets are going up, obviously, in the perfect time here for Light. Bunker going down to make sure to deal with the mass of Zerglings if they do decide to come in. Uh, Light covering all his bases, man. Uh, and you see the 17 drone count, is as the game goes on and Light keeps amping up his SCV count, he'll be further, further in the hole. He's going to have to get damage done with these Muta. I like how Light also drew that barracks back to make sure that it was in turret support range. I want to see if he's going to drop a third. Honestly, it feels like, why not? Just drop a third barracks rather than playing light at this stage. Or uh, opposite, you could go ahead and just rush straight up 
uh, to whatever he wants to counter this. It could be fun to see some Valkyries out here at this stage just for the kicks. Looks like we do have plus one weapons working. But now Beast trying to get to work his movement moves all the way in, checking things out. A bit of a stutter and took a massive amount of damage for nearly nothing. And it looks like, yeah, just going to GG with that maneuver. Yeah, he was going to have to preserve that Mutalisk health if he was going to have any sort of shot. And instead, diving it in and having them just hold position and just get him smacked in the face by a bunch of bullets. Yeah, it was looking really desperate. And it was kind of a thin margin to start, so might as well just go ahead and hop into the next game. Yeah, I mean, I think he was trying to get behind the mineral line so that the turret, to maybe get out of turret range and micro, but Light said, no thanks. Thanks for coming, man. I can eat your lunch. Have a good day. All right. Let's see what we have in store for game number two here for Light and Beast. All right, starting in the upper right-hand corner as the Purple Terran, we have Light. And in the bottom left. It is our Blue Zerg Beast. So now diggity. We saw the a ton of Zerglings. Muta thrown away. If you're Beast, do you just double down and say, let's go for it, man, and pull first. Let's get crazy. Or do you try to play a macro game with the monster that is light? That's a great question. I'm not sure I would want to. If Light is so strong. His macro is impeccable and his marine movement in the space of macro is, is what makes him an absolute Zerg killer. So yeah, I think maybe try something creative again. Maybe go for some, I don't know, crazy drop, maybe go for three hatch lurker, throw him off, something along those lines. But here we're talking about Beast getting creative and Light sending out a early forward SCV to maybe go for that forward Rax. Wow, we do have an eight Rax going down. Like once again, hey man, Light's playing a little bit outside of the box, you know, today people know him, like you said, as that macro player. Maybe he's like, you know what, I'm going to get aggro today, I'm going to get after it. And hey, when you're known for that and all of a sudden you switch it up, can really catch players by surprise. I think it's all Terran these days. There's something in the ter there's something that happened in Korea, maybe it's in the food, It's uh, but the, Korea the Terran players are like, you know what, this is our era, let's go ahead and mix it up. We're going to just get aggressive, get aggressive, get aggressive. It looks like we do have a supply depot behind it at the natural expansion. So having this forward racks, what it allows is sometimes, depending on where the initial Marines go, sometimes you can get a drone or two and be a little bit punishing early on. I know what it is. I know what happened to the Terran. Too much corn on the pizza, man. That's what it is. That's what happened in Korea. Boom. <laughs> I figured it out. Solve the puzzle. So for people not knowing the reference, uh, Nyokin not a big fan of corn on pizza, and apparently that is a standard topping out in Korea on pizza everywhere, which you consider, I mean, if you know Nyokin, he can be a picky eater. He can be, he can be. But we see eight racks go down, putting a wall behind it, really, really strong, you know, here from light. And he's probably gonna be able to get some damage here, right? Because even though it's cross map, it's kind of far in retro. With his micro, with the two SCBs both meeting up, if he can pop a couple drones, that'll put him in a good strong lead in position here. Yeah, it looks like the two SCBs now are gonna coalesce and join the two Marines that are careening across the middle. Overlord's been spotted across that six o'clock location, join. Now that drone sees the Marines incoming, and let's see how Beast defends it. That spawning pool not up, he is gonna have to pull drones to defend this. Yeah, and I'm wondering if he overmade a drone. They're diggity, because I only saw one larva readily available, so there might be two, so he's going to have delayed amount of Zerglings coming out as well. So this five Big drones moment here. Sit, trying to sit all in that corner. It looks like that bunker is going to finish, no problem. One Marine, or I was about to say one drone about to die, but a very quick morph to the creep colony, another drone being harassed. And right now, Beast hasn't really lost much, so doing a pretty solid defense, but he still is not going to be able to stop this bunker from finishing. Zergling spawning now. That something colony morphing, but the SCV's right there doing damage. One problem with that bunker is it can't really target fire that sunken colony, but now it looks like he's gathering up a lot of attack wars, just trying to get... Did manage to box out one SC for, e for a moment, but loses several drones right there. More drones going down, and right now, Beast's drone count is plummeted. He's looking at seven drones left after all of that, which is putting him in a very, very weak economic position. Yeah, Light's feeling real good. He's got his wall up. 
get in Marines out. Got so many drones. I mean, you see the worker count, plus 10 workers for light. And it looks like Beast is committing to some of this here, Diggity, because it's been nothing but lings ever since. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the one option you have. One interesting thing with that play is, is when you have Marines in bunkers, you can't always guarantee what they're going to attack. Like sometimes they're going to attack the Zerglings. Sometimes they're going to attack. Usually they'll prioritize the, the strongest threat, but a lot of drones getting absolutely annihilated in that last attack. And now there's a large wall out in front. But the thing is, this beast just has to go for it. He's got to go yep. for it. So get, wait till, or till the rest of those Zergling troop up till you feel like you have maximum surface area and then just throw everything you have at this wall, hope to get lucky. Right now though, Light, I don't see him with any forward SEVs to repair this front. Looks like some are moving to the natural expansion to start mining, but I would expect two or three SEVs to just stage there because Beast's one opportunity back in this match is breaching that front door. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna go for it. We do have five Marines here. Let's see if he can get attack and Here we go, this is the big moment. He sends links on both bunkers. Immediate pull of the SEVs here from light and he's building another bunker behind it trying to close it out oh he does bust the diggity he broke down the first depot can he get in here body blocking by the scv has really done well but i don't know if it's enough yeah i don't know if it's enough he, he had three marines that were hugging that top supply depot so they weren't able to get in range to repair it but it looks like light still might just have too many looks like there's the the academy's up there, some SCVs under fire to the north. Those Zerglings are pretty weak, however. It looks like a single Marine gonna walk up with that, plus the SCV should be enough to clear those Zerglings. And as soon as those Zerglings get cleared, we got one more wave of Zerglings. And if Beast can get, at least at the moment, he's managed to halt mining at the main, but he's gonna have the problem of fire bats as the game continues. Yeah, uh, speed has kicked in, so he'll be able to disrupt the mining in the main a little bit more, but there is a bunker now behind this wall. I don't think that we're going to be able to bust at this point. Even if we do, we have fire bats just waiting. Beast in a little bit more trouble here again. Every once in a while, I'll see some brilliant micro where you have the four zerglings just get on each corner of that fire bat. Right now, they're working on an engineering bay. Fire bat, uh, two fire bats out. That count's just going, uh, going to continue. Now we have that SCV able to, are they going to get to repair? It looks like they're just going to back up to the bunker. For a moment, Beast was trying to move those troops back down from the north. It looks like that supply depot is going to fall simply because there's not enough repair that can be done. The SCV is trying to hold the line. So more Zerglings going to join the attack to the north, but there's still a lot of fire bats waiting right there. Light was in the red briefly, however, and you can see the Zerglings trying to peck away at that academy so they don't have to deal with medics or additional fire bats on the line. But that supply depot sealing things up. Looks like the fire bats will get, ooh, yeah, able to get on top of that Zergling line, obliterate a good four or five of them. That was the entire attack force to Beast in the main. So a quick 2-0 victory for Light over Beast. Oh yeah, Light just kind of flexing his muscle, man. Automatically through the group already. And he, it comes out in first place as we expected. Um, but like I said, just almost flawless, man. Just unbelievable play in both games. We were really worried about him versus Motive in the beginning, but he pulled it back, no problem. And then he just absolutely just kind of got after Beast there. So hopefully we'll see, uh, looks like we're going to start off on Vermeer again. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see some of the new maps in play. Uh, I believe that the maps are preset to Vermeer Retro Polypoid throughout the uh through the first round like all the, the games are uh the maps were set oh so got players it. aren't choosing the losing player in this tournament is not choosing which map that they that they um wanted to play on the maps were preset by the creators so by starcast so by starcast tv so we're gonna yeah okay good to know good to know so uh Round of 16, we'll see all maps move on from there. And that's, I, I kind of like that play, actually. You get the, the best of the best moving on to the round of 16. So, you know, we have some really competitive people. Um, and then you've got the familiar stuff out of the way. And yeah, you get the guys who, who you know can define the meta from there. Yeah, so I think it'll be, it'll be get more creative as we go. But I think these, I like that as well. We're setting some maps. People can prep on the maps. People know the maps. So I think that's really good. But so up next, we have our... A first elimination map, Diggity. We got Motive versus Shine. And you said that Motive does have a hard time a little bit with Zerg, correct? Yes. Uh, I'll pull up in the background his page, but I think he's got something like a 38%. Yeah, I'm looking at 38% win rate versus Zerg overall, which is uh, not the best. Um, definitely his weakest matchup. Okay, can be a struggle. I mean, listen, PBZ, very hard matchup. 
um, very dynamic in terms of what can happen from the Protoss and the Zerg side. You know, will we see the Zerg play super aggressive 973? Um, will we see Muta switches, things like that, that Protoss don't account for? And if they lose Templar early in high-tech units, <clears throat> the game kind of just ends, right? So we'll see if Motive can defend here against Shine in game number one on Vermeer. All right, starting in the upper right-hand corner as that brown Protoss, we have Motive. And the bottom right, it's the blue Zerg. It is Shine. Now, on this map, I think um, everything is on the table for Protoss openings as well as Zerg. You know, does he want to go 9 gate? Does he want to go Forge first? Does he want to go Nexus first? 12 12, very popular right now to kind of counteract a lot of these over pools to get the Protoss ahead in the probe count. I think the what I've seen most out of Protoss these days is that, uh, that forward gate opener from the natural expansion getting that zealot count out just because it's been really important particularly ever since the 973 era to have zealots out on the field to create a bit of chaos in the follow-up uh, of the other game looks like we're seeing a pylon drop right around right along that edge and it's possible you, you can still i believe build a gateway in range from there but uh yes he can yeah. so he'll be he'll definitely be opening up with the nine or ten gate here looks like we're going to be going with the nine gate because we're setting the probe already and then we got the nine pool on the opposite side from shine yeah, that's trouble, man. If you don't scout this, and he has two issues a little bit right now, right? He put that pylon on the high ground, so he's going to have to immediately build a second pylon on the low ground to be able to close it up with a forge. Oh my goodness, is it 9-pool speed, or are we just going to do the drone trick? Looks like oh, man. Yeah, it's continuing. 9-pool speed. This could get really, really scary for Motive really fast. He needs that forge immediately, and a cannon. If he doesn't get the forge and a cannon, try and could bust him early on this game. It's, I like this play from Shine to try to sneak something out like this on a four-player map. Right now, he also gets an idea of where his opponent's out based on the timing of when that probe entered his base and from what direction. And the, it's not an absolute guarantee, but I think it's uh, pretty solid. It looks like he's going to go ahead and do a little bit of harassment on that uh, on the drone. He needs to do what he can to buy himself some time. Another pylon dropping, like you said. We'll have to wait for that forge. Two drones trying to push off uh, that probe to make sure it stays alive but yeah this is going to be really really close it's and on top of that even when you get that forge up that zealot's going to have to clog the way and it could be a little bit of a micro fight the zerglings are away zerglings on the way it's going to get tricky here he'll probably put three zerglings on the gateway trying to get the zealot to kind of pop out and then try to run by if the zerglings get in with speed very very tough life for motive so he's going to be very careful as he maneuvers back and forth with his zealots that are in the wall with the probe Meantime, the probe trying to do what it can to harass that natural expansion as long as possible. Looks like it's getting boxed out by those two additional Zerglings, though, so looks like Shine is going to be able to establish that base. Like you said, you got the Zerglings starting to attack that gateway, maybe have an opportunity to draw the Zealots out and get some damage done. Yeah, this is a very tricky spot. Oh, no, cannot get caught here. Cannot get caught here. Oh, no, Zerglings in Diggity. This is a problem. Soon they're going to have speed, and we'll never be able to catch them, man. Four Zerglings with speed coming, and it looks like they're turning around and engaging. Briefly, two probes making their way down. Two Zerglings also trying to create some chaos on the low ground, but one of those Zerglings, at least in the main, all oh, managed to get a probe kill right there. They're coming back for the cannon, getting some surrounds on that Zealot, but Shine needs to get in that base. I guess trying to mix it up with that natural expansion as long as he could before that cannon came online, but now speed is kicked in, and that's going to leave these probes very vulnerable. Yeah, three Zerglings left. Going to be a problem now. The lost binding time of continuously pulling your probes is an issue. He's going to do his best to try to intercept these Zerglings with the Zealot and get some hits off. And we see behind this, two more hatcheries going down. So he's not committing to some type of Lingo land. He's probably going to play it out. Feeling really good that he's got these Lings in the main already. Now the challenge for Motive is he needs to get some sort of defense in the main so he can get that cannon up and online. And eventually he's going to want to take that natural expansion. He still needs to worry because he's not... Well, it looks like he did manage to sneak a probe all the way back to the main to see the follow-up continuation. I don't know that he's confirmed a third or not, but he'll at least be able to see whether additional Zerglings are being produced. That might open up things where he feels a little bit more comfortable as far as what he needs to produce at that natural expansion. But if if Shine can keep active with those Zerglings and deny that gas uh, for a protracted period of time, then the problem becomes Mutalisk follow-up uh, follow or any sort of tech advantage that he can secure. 
Absolutely. I mean, we're already behind his motive. We only have three workers and our Nat is so late. So he's going to really have to make sure that, like you said, he doesn't lose enough gas mining time because he will be behind in every way in the tech. And that could be an instant loss as well. Looks like motive trying to counter this by moving two zealots from that natural expansion to try to get some economic disruption on shine the zergling still active in the main as the zealots are making into their, their way into the natural expansion of shine it looks like they're able to force at least the drones off there that's gonna at least slow down the economy of shine a little bit where he's gonna have to produce zerglings rather than drones uh, to try to even things up it looks like he did i, I think that's the cybernetic score uh at the main but the zerglings even if they don't manage to disrupt any gas, get any additional uh, probe kills, it's just an eye full of scouting information. Yeah, he knows everything that's going on. Ooh, is he gonna get one? Gets another. Oh, almost got that Zergling. The faster these are gone, the better he feels, Prentice, man. The better he feels. Looks feel. like the, the Zealots have pocketed behind that third. I assume drones just moved out to, or sorry, to the natural expansion. I assume the drones just moved out to the third for Shine, but at the very least, the Zealots able to force more Zerglings out and deny that natural expansion mining for a bit of time, getting some good trades here. Yeah, really effective getting in that back behind the mineral patch there. Well done from him. And now he's stabilized a bit. Second gas immediately down. Stargate on the way. So same time as the Spire. So at least he'll feel some sense that he's stabilized. Like I said, the big issue right now for me looking at this game 25 workers to 20 already, and you're going to see that drone count start to amp up because of the three hatcheries. Yeah, and on top of that, you expended a lot of zealots in the early game. You don't really have that zealot timing to throw out at this, and so you're at high risk of... Well, first of all, you want to be a lot further economically uh, ahead as a Protoss at this stage, but secondarily, you don't really have a lot of tools in your chest to stop Shine from droning up and following it up with maybe a potential contain. Yeah, that's... That's where it gets tricky, right? Especially as part as we get those contains, and this is a map where you can get a good contain at the natural. So he's gonna want to try to have some map presence, but can't sacrifice any of the Corsair here. He's gonna really need to just get a good amount of scouting information with the first one, see what's going on, and then react appropriately. We do see another move out here, Diggity. So marching out with the four zealots, he's doing this mostly blind. He's got one zealot moving out on the map, maybe hoping to find something sneaky, or maybe just to have that out pocketed later. Uh, the Corsair making its way. So interesting. So the Zealots marching out and making their way back. Maybe just wanted to see whether the Zerglings were on the field or not. But at the very least, Motive is going to be able to confirm the saturation here at that natural expansion. is going to be able to confirm that it was in fact Spire at the main. But let's see if he's even able to get an Overload kill out of this. Nope. Oh, no. Take it in. No. Scourge spawning bad, right on top bad of him. Scourge. Yeah, bad, bad Scourge. Not good. I think we might even see, yeah, we're probably going to see Muta popping out as well, considering he popped one of the Sair immediately, and he's going to get in here. Uh, he's not going to bring that one Sair back. We could see a quick one here if Motive does not get those cannons up. Yeah, so now at the main, two cannons attempting to be built to defend this. It looks like those cannons are going to get dropped. The Zerglings pulling back to the natural expansion. There's Sutton Colony on the way, and it looks like Shine is certainly going to be able to seal this game one. He's looking in strong position. Corsair down, that leaves no anti-air to speak of. Yeah, Muta just absolutely running through. We see a counterattack here from Motive, trying to get something done. Too many Zerglings and Asanka are going to hold these Elves and wipe them off the map. At the same time, they'll just be putting more Scourge in the way of these Sairs to come back and spawn out. Oop, we're attacking the Nexus by mistake, but... Oh! Dance, Sair, dance! Okay, like he gets out. Desperation, two gateways in the natural expansion. The Corsair trying to, ooh, was trying to tempt it. Oh, was lucky he didn't end up losing an additional Corsair on top of that. So now, the situation, we've got Motive down to one base, losing all of his tech, and you've got three base Zerg. There's a Dark Templar out, but it looks like there's Overlord and Sutton Colony, uh, Sutton Colony coverage absolutely everywhere. There's GG. That was Motive's last desperation out. So firm win here, game one for Shine. Yeah, absolutely. I think Motive at the end, they were staying in thinking it could be two Ash Muta and he could secure up one base. Once he sees the third and it gets no damage done with the, with the DT, he's like, all right, man, I'm out. But really well played from Shine. Risky build order, nine pool speed. You know, you got to get some damage done early. And he did. He was in there multitasking really well back at home for the Zelts coming, picking off some probes, disrupting mining. Very, very strong play from him.
Wondering if the nine pool speed was the decision against Motive, knowing that this is one of his weaker matchups to begin with. And I'll be curious to see if he decides to open up with that again. Especially if he knows that Motive is a gate first player, you know, as someone who does open up gate first, that is definitely one of the harder builds to play against. Especially if you don't get the forge up right away in the cannon, like things become very tricky. And it, it's transitioning into all in ling, or are they transitioning into standard play? Because you don't get to scout anymore. Once you the speedlings are on the map, Zerg has map control. Protus has to stay back. So definitely, definitely gets tricky from there. All right, from here, let's go ahead and slot into the next match on Retro. We're going to have game two between Motive and Shine. All right, starting in the bottom left-hand corner as the Teal Protoss, we have Motive. And in the bottom right, it is our purple Zerg, Shine. I think also so, another lesson learned there is that pylon on the high ground can be a bit risky. Absolutely, absolutely. It, against like these Ling openers, if you saw how delayed the forge was in the cannon, it, it just makes all the difference. Especially, yeah, that front door seal just being incomplete allowed those Zerglings to just create all the more chaos there. Zerglings love chaos. Love, Zerglings love chaos. chaos. They do. They love it. Feed off of it. Chaos incarnate. Anyway, Motive, being one of those guys that struggles against uh, Zerg at large, I'll be interested to see if he decides to go for something off-tempo or if he's just going to go for another gate opener. It looks like thus far he's dropped the pylon and he's scouting immediate. So you see that probe making its way, scouting immediately after Pylon wants to get an eye on what Shine was doing, which I'm not surprised after game one. Yeah, he'll just play safe here. He's going to drop a forge, right? If you scout the probe after Pylon, that just means I'm going to put a forge down and we're just going to get into a game, right? Like, we're just going to play. Um, retro, big map, big map. So, you know, he might feel good about just putting the forge down, scouting, maybe put a Nexus for Cannon if he can, if he scouts him. It was see in this case that he won't, so he'll probably need the cannon before. Oh, he's going to double scout. Could see the cannon rush, man. Could see it right here. Yeah, one thing with, especially if the Overlord doesn't end up scouting that probe as it's making its way across, is it going to stay out of vision? Doesn't look like it was able to stay out of vision. But sometimes you can sneak behind that mineral line. The hatchery as it's constructing doesn't have vision. So on occasion, yeah, you can see an attempt that cannons behind the lines. Oh, ho, ho, diggity. Here we go, baby. Two pylons will go down. He'll probably send the second probe to help harass the drones as they come out. Second, second uh, pylon drops. That's going to seal it in. We also have another probe nearby, keep in mind, that can sneak through and maybe be a threat. One ooh, drone able to sneak in just on ooh. the edge of that time. So now it's a drone versus probe fight. A few more drones making their way out to try to sneak another one through. There's the cancellation and a redrop of that pylon to try to get better positioning for that probe to get the cannons down. Yeah, really well done. One drone on the cannon should not be enough. We see the second probe coming up and, and he's committed here now. When you go this far, you're committed. You really need to get this down because you've wasted so much time, money on this. He's going to have to try to get some damage done. We see the Zerglings popping, but oh man, he cancels the hatchery. He just cancels the hatch and says, all right, we're going to play from here. Interesting. So we do a so little bit of an establishment right there. Motive actually able to get that natural expansion up and running. Probe's still able to scout, so it's going to be able to see the Zerglings as they're produced. That probe is still active, so if he wants to throw down something additional, he can go ahead, but that cannon is pretty heavily damaged. And it looks like there's just going to be another hatchery drop there at the 3 o'clock. Yeah, he has to take that base there. We'll see if he decides to put a hatchery in top right. Um, and But the problem is now his bases will be spread out, right? Like, he's going to have to deal with zealot pressure and other things. But his bases are going to be all over the map. So that definitely creates a challenge for Zerg. And he ends up just taking the third hatchery here by his natural, just where his fourth would probably normally go. So he'll wait to clear that cannon. Interestingly enough, he's got another hatchery building at the natural expansion, and this leads me to believe, are we going to see a Zergling flood out from Shine? We could. I would imagine he would want to take his gas soon so we can get speed. But right now we're just taking this out. I think he's just going to drop a fourth hatchery 
right here at the net now that he's cleared the cannon. Yeah, still no gas. The, yeah, fourth hatchery, so straight four hatch before. It's rare where you see four hatch before gas, but it looks like we're seeing it today. Desperate times call for desperate measures, Diggity. We had to cancel that net hatch, so we're going to go four hatch before gas. Make up for it. Least motive in a better situation. He's got that natural expansion up and running. No zelts to speak of as of yet, but uh, well defended here regardless because the Zergling's still wandering around trying to deal with that probe interior to the base. Yeah, and from here, I'm imagining Shine could go still into whatever he'd like. He can go into four hatch Hydra. He can go into a five hatch Hydra, put some early pressure on. He could just go into lair and play out from there. So he does leave himself some options. I think he just wanted to make sure he got his larva down and he's gonna be able to push the game on. Uh, as we say, that motive pushing his Zelda across the map is going to try to harass a little bit more, kind of wreak some havoc. Five hatcheries. I'm a little bit surprised to see that fifth hatchery before we're seeing additional drones fill in. Yeah, he's he wants the larva, so I'm imagining we're going to see a five hatch Hydra kind of push and hope. There's that timing for five hatch Hydra where you get in there and you try to push before Storm is up. That's the timing that exists, so if he can, he might be aiming for something like that. Probes now pulling offline to try to defend themselves. There is uh, that Zealot able to get some good damage. And this is some additional economic disruption. I got to say, Motive actually not looking too shabby right here. Yeah, he's got a lot of hatcheries, but he's been rolling on a pretty measly drone count up to this stage. And Motive uh, doing a pretty good job of making a better game of it. Nice drone drill right there on top of the Zealot, shoving it all the way to the hatchery. Yeah, it's well done there. Won't take any damage. We see a Zealot coming in here. And he'll probably be happy to say, okay, there's only two drones here at your third, which is your natural to start. So got to be feeling pretty comfortable right now as motive to see this. Yeah, much healthier economic differential here. This is usually where you want to be as a Protoss player. Looks like we have that Citadel of Dune sitting at the natural expansion. And a lot of options now open to motive. Yeah, I see that we saw the Citadel right away. I think we're just going to go into four gate. Yeah, four gate plus one speed legs. And we're just going to pressure, pressure, pressure. Second gas being dropped, so might see some tech behind it as far as a follow-up. I have seen some protists that do like to do four gate pressure into double stargate to kind of account for a muta switch, but he hasn't seen a lair in any of the bases. He has good scouting information, he had the zealots in, so he'll probably just continue on. He has to say, add the Templar archives like he is now and just want to push forward with the pressure. Yeah, you can go ahead and skip the Stargate tech because there's, like you said, there's been absolutely no indication of Mutalisks. The Zealots will be able to create enough havoc in between. Off timing here, we got four Zealots moving out. It looks like they're also going to make their way to the natural expansion. The Hydalisks are starting to get constructed. I think the Zerglings are in sufficient numbers uh, to potentially deal with this, but let's see if Shine is, he's already got a Sutton Colony morphing and the Zealots are going to arrive before that's uh, morphed, so might be able to get some damage done. Yeah, definitely tricky here. Oh, speed kicking in. What a good timing, man. He got there as soon as speed kicked in. Plus one not quite done yet. Probably just going to yeah, run these into the main, try to get some damage done. We're going to fight on the ramp. Zealous getting cleaned up pretty quickly here, though. Uh, this is definitely not the move that Motive wanted to do when he's wasting out some of these Zealous, but he's looking for that plus one speed leg timing. We're just kind of giving some of these units away. They're more powerful. They can all just be together. Yeah, all sorts of zealots now making their way up. It looks like Motive, he does have some Hydals dealing with this. Another fantastic drone drill where it looked like there was just going to be a mass of zealots that were able to create all sorts of chaos. Instead, getting caught all over those drones. So beautiful defense from Shine. Yeah, really, really well done. The drone drill was fantastic. He blocked the other four that came running in. Really, really good from him. But Motive continuing to flood zealots here across the map. Wants to continue this pressure and going up to six gateways. Yeah, attacking on additional gateways is not going to relent. They, we have more Zerglings out. We still have that blockade at the uh, decent SimCity of the Natural Expansion, but now moving up to that three o'clock base, we do have a Sutton Colony. It looks like an evolution chamber right there. Keep in mind, Zergling speed is finished, so the Zerglings can reinforce to either location, but they need to be nearby or in between the two. One critical piece, though, is we do have plus one weapons finished for those alts, so they are going to trade a little bit better against those Zerglings. Wow, really well done by Bodhi. He runs by the Sunken Colony so that the drones could not drill through all the Zealots. Let's see if he can get it. If he can snipe it down, he should be okay. But, dude, immaculate defense here, Shine. Just, just droning and using his workers so well. 
His drills have been incredible, and that's allowed him to preserve a very, very high drone count despite all of this harassment. And you can see Motive was, it's rare where you'll see a Protoss go like, you know what, I need to avoid these drones with my Zealots because of just how strong uh, their defensive capability is. Uh, the Dark Templar trying to sneak into the natural expansion, wants to be able to make it all the way into the main. Overlord speed is not yet complete, so could get some drone kills here. We're in, man. Here we go. Let's see how many we can get. Immediate pull. Just one, okay. But this is not bad for Motive, forcing the drone pull, getting some de economic damage done, making Shine have to deal with this DT in his base. Six hatchery going down now for Shine. We're gonna see that Battle Zerg style, six hatch. Just, oh, it's not a hatch, it's a creep colony. I thought we were gonna see six hatcheries, man. Just five. Motive in the, mean Motive in the meantime, going ahead and taking that opportunity to grab his base at the nine o'clock to move up to three. And now, yeah, it's turning into a little bit of a macro battle. We've got all sorts of High Templar waiting at the natural expansion. We've got a healthy gateway count there from Motive. The Zerglings going ahead and moving out and checking things. But Shine, about 10 drones behind, just now tacking on that natural expansion gas. Has a lot of hatcheries to work with as the Spire, where you can go ahead and get some flexibility with this tech. And is pretty well sealed up at each location. I think the problem for him, though, is, is without recognizing that this third is going up, that's going to allow Motive to have a very comfortable shift into the mid-late game. Absolutely. Getting that third gas is so big for Protoss, right? Um, the trick, I think, going into the mid-game now is will we see the Dark Archon? Because we do see a Spire going down, so I'm imagining there's going to be maybe some type of muta list switch because there are no Sair. Oh, dropship here, diggity. Dropship, stop me in my tracks to watch this dropship because this could be big. I think this is filled with High Templar. It is spotted. Overlord spots it, but... Are, is there going to be a reaction? Shine still seems to be messing around with Zerglings at the natural and shooting that between there and the third. So it looks like we're seeing Dark Templar engage at the main, a beautiful storm drop at the natural expansion, obliterating that entire drone line. The Zerglings are managing to get up to the nine o'clock. The Photon Cannon is not quite covering, but I assume a slice storm well placed should be able to deal with that or the Zealot's just going to go ahead and wander up. But now all of a sudden, that natural expansion completely empty, a beautiful attack from Motive, maybe overextending a little bit with the Zealot attack at the three o'clock. If anything, he's just pulling Shine around the map saying, right, I'm over here with the DT, I have Zealots, you know, trying to get attention away from this dropship to see if he can get some more damage done. Um, because that drop was just a massive point of the game right there, getting so many drones and the probe count is so healthy. Some photon cannons just in case of Mutalisk turnaround switch. I, I would be a little bit surprised to see Shine do, uh, but he is banking a lot of gas and a whole lot of that gas just got spent. So. I'm, maybe we're going to see a Muta switch for uh, a moment here to try to take a stab at one of these bases. Oh my goodness, he just got so many drones transferred over. Oh my goodness, a whole other chunk of drones down, man. Once again, completely emptying that natural expansion. Great drops here from Motive. Yeah, and there's that Dark Archon. He's made it on the field. Love to see it. If you, the only way to deal with Muta or the Sair or the Dark Archon. So not having the Sair, he had to go with that option. It's a strong option. Maelstrom in there. As we say, there are the Mutalists themselves going to try to fly in and harass the main. But to keep your Templar alive, you need some AoE against these Mutalists that are not just Storm because they just fly right through it and around it. Looks like that base top right has been uh, found by, a, I assume it seems out the Mutalists moving in. Now greeted by two cans. Yeah, Maelstrom. Let's see if it's if there's energy in the research. Some probes actually pulling out of the main. One Mutalist goes down. Dragoons in mass trying to support this. The Dark Templar, yeah, I think I think that Dark Archon doesn't quite have the energy yet because it's going ahead and sneaking out of view. Wants to make sure to capture. And if you can sneak it, move up, get that Maelstrom, and then follow it up with a storm, that is a huge depletion. But right now, yeah, it doesn't look like he, either he doesn't have enough energy or he doesn't have Maelstrom quite researched because the Mutalisks are wreaking a lot of havoc. Yeah, I was a little nervous there, Diggity. I saw them fly through the mural line, and sometimes Protoss are attempted, like, oh, you know what, let me storm these things. And the next thing you know, you have no probes in your mineral line because you storm yourself. So you got to be really careful as you click on them as they're flying around here. And with that, Shine has actually evened the worker count. Yeah, these Mutalists are just doing so much damage, man. I mean, like I said, no Sair makes it tough. But Motive getting out of the map himself is like, you know what? No problem. You're on the map with your Mutalists. I'm going to push in. But not sure. oh, we do have two observers with this army as well. So this could cause some problems here for Shine. Got some drones in transition towards that third, but that's also going to reveal the position of those Dragoons. The Mutalists sweeping out. We want to see if they can catch a high, t a high Templar or two to negate some of that storm. Now, this is where... Oh, Very baby. Nice able to get it. That bye bye 
Goodbye, uh, Mutalists. Don't have to worry about them sniping your High Templar anymore. So we'll see how Shine is able to dodge storms with Hydra. He's got some Lurkers in position, but Observers are right there. Ooh, massive storms. Oh Beautiful my goodness. Storms. Wow, he went for the Dark Archon immediately, and that allowed him just to move in. He gets two massive storms, another big one, another Lurker, and I think we're going to see Motive here bust through Shine's natural, and GG is on. Wow, man. I think it was those two storms that just completely covered the entirety of the defense forces that were there for Shine. And great play, I have to say, from Motive. He actually looked pretty sharp there overall, was able to uh, sneak his way back out of it. I was a little bit concerned at certain stages, especially with that mute, that uh, Muta swap, but handled it really well um, and able to sneak right back into it. So we're going to move on to game three on Polypoid. Yeah, really good play from him there, man. I like the multitask. I like how he pulled him in different directions with the Zealots, the DT, and the shuttles. Um, Maelstrom was awesome and just kind of took his opportunity and said, you know what, I feel good. I'm not going to sit here and deal with these mute. I'm just going to go in and force him to come back. Big storms, really well played for motive. So 1-1, one, one, moving on to game number three to see who is going to go into the decider match and who is eliminated from our event. All right, starting in the upper right-hand corner as the Brown Zerg, we have Shine. And in the top left is our Red Protus. It is Motive. Right, Polypoid diggity. Everybody's... Over it. I'm going to be honest. I'm over this map, playing it a lot, because Zerg love to camp on these high grounds with Lurkers, man. They're impossible to bust. I'll have to, I, I want to ask you this. Do you feel like Polypoid is uh, effectively Neo Fighting Spirit? Is it Neo Fighting Spirit? I think right, the only thing that bet. makes it the only thing that makes it different, man, is is the high ground. That Everything else is like, yeah, like we've been playing it so much. It's been in the map pool for seasons, ASL seasons, like many tournaments. I think it's kind of it's like that gum that you chewed for a long time. Now it's out of flavor. You still chew it because you want it, but it's not as not as good as it used to be. This time, mode of going ahead and plopping that pylon down at the natural expansion rather than risking it from the high ground. Looks like he's drawing that probe back, so probably going to open up gateway first because he's not uh, trying to cap that scouting information. Shines Overlord making its way bottom right in the meantime. Yeah, oh, looks like another 9 gate here. This time he's going back to the gateway. First options. That This is not the first time we've seen in this event or others, Zerg's now setting their Overlords the opposite direction. Because normally they set it towards the natural of another base. But many times now, we've seen Zergs are now starting to set them on the way. I wonder if they're not as worried about scouting Protus first or what, or there's something up their sleeve, but this is definitely something I've been noticing lately from different Zergs. wonder if it has to do with... That's a good question, actually, because I want to say it maybe has to do with the decisions around the follow-up Zerglings and whether the Zerglings... Because critically, getting that Overlord over the natural expansion, you can first of all dive it in to get the tech check. You can also see how many Zealots are accruing at that natural uh, safely, and that can help you with a lot of decisions. But the Zerglings on the front, you can kind of get a good look at how many Zealots are being accrued. Uh, you still need to get something in position, though, to confirm that something you're not going up against double Stargate or something like that in the background, though. Yeah, so definitely odd to me that that's, uh, that's been the scenario lately. But what do I know? These guys are professionals. They're getting after it, so we'll see what they decide. First Zealot is out. Should be able to get here in time to get a little bit of harassment done. And it looks like really there's an attempt. Really good harassment here at the third. Yeah, beautiful, because it looks like Shine wanted to go, is actually going to go for... Oh, oh, look at oh, that! What a me. sick play. Motive dropping the assimilator to deny the drone trick, where if you plop down, spend the resources, get the extractor, you get a, a full health drone. And I think he wanted to try to add it out against that probe and take three ba uh, the third base before gas, and instead... Dropping that assimilator underneath, spending the 33 resources to get the drone kill and delay that third base for quite some time. This may trigger Shine to do something a little bit crazy, losing that drone, delaying his third so much. We already see eight Zerglings, and we do see some mining. I wonder if we're going to see a Zergling flood because of that lost drone. Looks like Motive did in fact spot the Zerglings out on the front, though, so he's seeing this massive Zerglings. 
The other option is, is if he, oh yeah, we're seeing more Zerglings starting to gather up. It looks like he's maybe trying to hide the additional ones. That, that Zealot mid-map could be critical if that Zealot can swing back around and confirm uh, the Zergling count. And we'll see, I think there's an Overlord already, that second Overlord moving out is already hovering over that natural expansion. Yeah, he's going to have to hold. He's going to get that Forge down immediately and hold. Oh, he does see a bunch of the Zerglings. And now he confirms now, Diggity. Now he knows. He knows something's up. He knows he's got a hold and he wins the games. We see a shield battery going down. Really good, strong play. He knows that the Forge won't be in time. This creates the wall and will be able to heal his Zealots in the front. So, oh, Forge is in the main. Well done from him. Oh, no. Good surround here, though, from Shine. Will it be enough? Zerglings look like they're mostly dying. There was a good recharge, and man, still five Zealots standing versus five Zerglings. This is not looking good for Shine, and a very healthy economy behind this. That was a lot of Zerglings dedicated and more Zerglings that were produced behind this. So Shine's going to have to take another shot, maybe wait for a speed to finish. Well, he's positioning a drone, but this is a... I'm not going to say a completely 100% unrecoverable position, but certainly when you're looking at half the worker count and you've dedicated so many of your early larva to Zerglings uh, and you didn't get anything for it, it's uh, it's not looking good. Yeah, definitely a struggle now. He's continuing to produce Zerglings. Motive's got to be careful. Doesn't want to move too far into the map because you don't want the Zerglings to run your base and just backdoor you. That'd be a terrible way to lose. So he decided to go home, sent one out, trying to see, but... I haven't seen that drone count go up there, Diggity. I haven't seen it move from nine. So that tells me one thing. We're doubling down on this. We're going all in with these Zerglings here, man. No move from nine. We got a big pile of Zerglings. It looks like at that inside 12 location. I think Shine hoping to bait the Zealots out to maybe get some form of a run by. Additional cannon, I believe, dropped there from Motive. Shine just checking the front, trying to keep an eye on that Zealot count and starting to hot key up that, yeah, that secondary attack wants to try to flood this, breach that front door and get the win from there. I imagine he's going to try to bust down the gateway immediately with some of the Zerglings, fight with the other, see what he can do. And here we go. This is the moment. This is the moment. This is what his tournament is based upon right here. Attacking both the shield battery and the gateway. Probes are being pulled. Links break down the shield battery. They do get some by. Looks like the probe's doing a good job of getting damage on the Zerglings. The Zerglings confused, trying to get past to the cannons, and that is it. Everything's gone. Shine calling GG right there. And it looks like Shine has been eliminated, and we're going to see Motive move on to the final match. Motive gets to move on. Well played from him, but in front of him here, another Zerg who, I'm telling you, man, likes to just get after it. Yeah, Beast is, yeah, he's creative. He's beastly. Like you were saying, you know, Quan esque I think Quan Ro is, would you say that Quan Ro is like the definitive aggro Zerg? I feel like that there's really no Zerg that I can think of that is more quintessential aggro than, uh, than yeah. Quan Ro. So it's nice to see people living up to the legacy of the being in Zergy Zerg. It wouldn't surprise me if some of these guys are big fans, you know? <laughs> Just like, yep, that's how I want to play. Just like that. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, man, they this guy is super aggressive. Watch the stream, take notes. Let's go ahead and <laughs> yeah. dive into the, the final match here on Vermeer. All right, starting in the upper left-hand corner as the orange Zerg. You're going to have Beast. And in the top right, our White Protus, it is Motive. So he's felt a lot of pressure so far, Diggity. You think he just goes back to the Forge, or now does he say, you know what, I like the gateway I can hold. I'm just going to stick with that. With Beast, I might go Forge first. Just, again, talking about his propensity to be aggressive early. Just so you know that you're going to be able to get to the next stage of the game. Um, Especially because I don't, I don't know if these players can watch the previous matches, but especially seeing that nine pool win uh, previously, I might feel like going for a nine pool if I was Beast, especially, like you said, his proclivities. Kind of curious, does Quanro stream? I would love to watch that stream if he does. Uh, I'm not sure. I am not sure if he streams. Harder to get access to that sort of thing from uh, this side of the world. Regardless, it looks like the it looks like it, at the very least is going to be some form of Overlord first opener here from Beast. Yeah, we'll see if he decides if he's going to go an Overpool and some pressure, um, or if he's 
You think Motive would have learned here, Diggity, with that pylon on the high ground, right? Like, you know, yep. let me just put it in the gnat and move on. But no, he's decided he's going to do the same thing. Going to put the nine gate down and he's going to search the bottom right. Is there any advantage to that? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel there is unless you're trying. Sometimes what other players will do is they put it on the high ground and they'll hide another gateway behind it towards the nexus. So Zerg is like, oh, okay, it's it's a nine gate, and next thing you know, it's a nine nine, and you have a lot of zealots flooding out. So there is some way to add some stuff to your game, but and now the second pylon is in the main, so he won't have the room to add uh, a forge. Very interesting. I guess he's got to just play three pylon before uh, three pylon nexus or nexus, then the third pylon before the forge because he's not able to put it there. Got a spawning pool, and it looks like a 206-ish gas in the main, so maybe a two-hatch mutilisk opener here. Yeah, and I, once again, the Overlord to me, he Beast set it down to his gnat and then over towards Motive. That way he would avoid that if Motive went to the top center to scatter it early. So Zergs get trickier and trickier all the time, getting those crazy plays out. Motive maybe going to be aggressive here. He's got So he's got a Zealot and two probes, so the probe and the main going to be able to group up. And let's see if he draws that second probe around just to get a little bit of additional support. Looks like Beast getting nice disruption with that drone on that Zealot in the front. Yeah, drone control is crazy, man. That's just so well done. Gets to the middle of that Zealot, blocks it out. I'm curious about the second probe going home finally. Can't waste too much eco. Want to get something back. So a little bit of harassment. Let's see, you can already see one of the drones, a couple of the drones with gas huddling in the main, and that gas disruption uh, certainly going to, it, if it was a, an intended spire opening, certainly going to disrupt things along those lines. Maybe we'll see some earlier gas in between. Um, but it's going to be a speedling all in diggity. You're going to say, Raz, how do you know that? And I'm going to say, I know that because he already used the 100 gas, and with, this, with Beast scouting that wall the way it is, he definitely feels like he can bust it because there's nothing down there yet. Good call. Looks like we, oh, some... Nice one versus one uh, engagement. They're able to get a lot of Zerglings. So at the very least, as far as uh, Zerglings that have died thus far, Motive uh, at least able to thin out the count a little bit. But like, yeah, like you said, you would have thought he learned from that previous match. Looks like he is dropping a forge, so maybe he has a sniff of this. Yeah, I mean, he saw the drone with the gas in hand being pulled and not going back. So... He has to know that the gas was most likely to spin on something, and there it is, Zergling speed. Let's see if you can hold here, man. Zergling's amping up. That wall is not closed yet. Oh, there we go. Well done for Motive. Got green-handed with the drones there in the main. It looks like the Zergling's trying to pound away at that gateway. That's taking a lot of damage, and Motive hasn't moved off. He's pulling probes now. The Zelt's engaging, but the gateway is down, so it is going to be only... Never mind, the cannon doesn't even get up, so it's the four Zealots and the whatever he can produce out of the forge as far as defenses from here, and that is going to be a big indicator from Beast to continue to apply the pressure. Yeah, he's going to flood now. The Lings are never going to stop. We're going to see those Lings in the main get as many kills as they can. The Once the Zealots come close to the Nexus, they'll run back out and kill the cannon together. And we're just going to see a massive, massive pressure here from Beast. Can Motive hold? Oh, so there's two Zealots going to go down. Keep in mind, it's going to be a very long time before additional Zealots are on the map. More surround on that cannon, and Motive looks like... I don't think he can fight this off from this stage. There's one Zealot remaining. The Probe's trying to fight, but this is... Yeah, there's GG. Wow, man. Yeah. As soon as the gas was used and he had some left and I knew he saw that wall, I Beast was like, I'm this guy. Does, does he know who I am? Does he know how I play? Because I'm get, I'm coming for you, man. Yeah, I think you were... You're right with that pilot. You would have thought he would have learned from that, uh, that, that first game with the pylon placement. But I'm wondering if there was some sort of if they were able to see the games in between and notice that, and if that was maybe a calculation for Beast is, you know what, if he's going to go for that high ground pylon again, might as well go Zergling speed. And yeah, it won't be a nine pool, but we can create some uh, chaos. But this time, it like you like we said also previous, the Zerglings feasting on chaos and turning it into a victory here. They love it. All right, we're going into game number two here. We'll see if Motive can pull one back or if Beast is going to be able to close out this series.
Right, starting in the upper right hand corner as the blue Protoss, we have Motive. And in the bottom right, it's our orange Zerg. It is Beast. This time on Retro, which has produced some fun games, I think, up to this stage. Uh, Motive, yeah, hopefully he puts the pile on the low ground. Previously favoring that Forge opener on this map. Let's see if he repeats it this time. It looks like that Overlord is headed straight to Motive Space right off the bat. Yeah, this time no trigger with the, with the Overlords. We'll see what Beast decides to open, man. Will he go with something aggro again? Will we see some type of speedling all in? 973? Who knows with this guy? I'm surprised we didn't see a four pool come out because it's in his arsenal. It's in his arsenal. One of those guys who can pull it. it off. Oh, he, he likes it. He, he'll go for it. You know, Zerglings won you the game, game one. It might as well, game two is kind of my feeling. Looks like we do have the pylon down at the natural expansion and that probe making its way down. I think it's going to find that overlord, so it's going to discover, without a doubt, the positioning to start here. Yeah, so we see pylon on the ground. We're going to see another forge. Like you said, he obviously favors that on this map for whatever reason. So it could be because of how big the natural areas are that are open and wants to play safe. Which I think is fine, knowing that you're against an aggro zerg, it's totally cool to just do it. And of course, this game, like the last, we have a 11 hatch going down there. Oh, never mind, he changed his never mind. mind. He set the drone and then put down the pool, the cast of the commentator. Oh no, don't go next, it's first now, man. For, I'll, okay, I'll say the previous game, seeing the, I'm uh, occasionally thrown off by you seeing the drone count and seeing the, the the uh, worker count, next, or the overall supply count next to it early game. Because I'm like, okay, wait a minute, that's nine drones, right? And then my brain kind of fidgets out on occasion. But this time, yeah, it looks like we're seeing a transition to the overpool, which I think makes sense because you got that probe right there. And with a decent amount of micro motive, would have been able to create some disruption at that uh, natural expansion, maybe even drop a pylon or something along those lines. But this time a little bit, so he had the opportunity to create some disruption right there, but losing it a little bit. So the drone able to go ahead and get that natural expansion up. Yeah, it would have been nice for him to be able to block that a little bit, but Beast now getting this scout, seeing its forge, probably not going to make so many Zerglings, just going to add drones, didn't take a gas, so we know there's not going to be any kind of crazy early pressure from him. And I think we have another drone that's, we'll see if there's another drone wandering out, uh, wandering out on the map. I think we're going to try to see another attempt at three hatch before gas, but going to be right in Moda's face. Moda's going to be able to wander right back, confirm that there's no gas there, there's no gas at the natural expansion. So at the, it looks like we're going to see a pretty heavy macro opener from both players. I got to be honest, Diggity, I hate this wall from Motive. There's like such a big gap. I'm not sure why he didn't put the pylon on top of the neutral object there as part of the map. It's a very, knowing the player you're playing again, to build it like that is very odd to me. I wonder if it's a bait where it's like, okay, you went all in Zerglings before. I'm going to leave this gap for you if you want to come. <laughs> Try to have something in between. Looks like finally that uh, probe scout has been taken out in the main. But yeah, that Overlord saw kind of that odd odd configuration. It's now going to be able to wander up in the main, confirm that second gas. But that is, this is pretty risky. You've got a pretty sizable gap, as you said, to the north. And you're playing against a guy who Ling all into you last game with Zergling speed. Yeah, definitely another risk there, but seems to be playing pretty standard so far. Nothing too crazy yet from Beast. See a lair going down. So, nothing nothing wild here. Very standard from everybody. Nothing crazy. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see if Beast goes for just that standard macro. He is attacking to lair behind this. He, having eliminated that probe scout, what I've seen a lot of Zerg do in response to that is go for a 973 attempt uh, just because Protoss is in the dark you, they don't know how many Hydrosis are coming and I think it makes it a little bit more successful a little bit more flexible you do see that Stargate morphing in the meantime for Motive yeah everything seems to be normal Motive we're going to send out a Zealot try to get more scouting information didn't even do damage he'd love to get a couple drones but he definitely wants to see what's going on when you're in the dark like this, you, you know, you get very worried, start adding cannons because you don't know what's going on. And if it is 973, like you're saying, Diggity, and they get up here and you have one cannon, the game is just, it's over. Yep. And the, the other problem is, is until you have that information, sometimes you got to bank those minerals just in case. 
probes making its way out. It looks like that zealot's going to be able to sneak into the six o'clock. Uh, is going to be able to get some economic disruption here successfully. The, dr the zerglings making the way that direction. That's also going to open up the probe to sneak right in and check out that natural expansion. I think that's a fourth hatchery that's been dropped there. So it looks like we're just seeing standard play from Beast. Yeah, really good for a motive here to pull the zerglings away so we can get a full scout. Um, and he's going to be sending a, another zealot into the natural to cause a little bit more economic damage. If he can get a pull, that'd be great. The old Razzle Dazzle able to pull the Zerglings one direction and then fill in a Zealot everywhere else and actually confirming the Hydralis Den in the main on top of it. So yeah, Hydralis Den going down with the Lair. Somewhat of an odd combination there, Diggity. Honestly, if it were me, I'd be like, what's... Ooh, Ooh. got a drone, nice. But if I was motive, I'd be like, mm, this is weird. What do we got going on here? Four hatch... Four Dan? hatch, second gas grabbed with the layer. It looks like we do have another hatch being added on. It's, now here's the flexibility is, is we could be having a, a lurker upgrade for something along those lines, but we could also just be seeing a standard move to five hatch hydralisk. You don't think we could bring it back to 2002, do you, with a slow lurker drop? I would love to see that, the eight millimeter. Oh, Zerling's, here we go. Ooh, Talking about that uh, that northern edge previously, the Zergling's able to get in the main. It looks like they're just going to rush and try to get as many pro kills as possible. Yeah, this is what I was talking about before. Beast recognizing, getting in the main, harassing these probes, pulling them off gas, which is the biggest thing. Ooh, doesn't see. Ooh, he, he just, oh, got it. Motive just seeing it there, but now we got to deal with these Zerglings. They got speed. Okay. Nice pin well, in the wall. Well Good surrounding, him. but. Still, that was a decent disruption of gas. Second Corsair out. And right now, yeah, Motive, maybe because he sees that lair built, getting that, that uh, Corsair fleet up. But uh, let's see if he transitions into, yeah, the Templar Archives to, to follow things up. Beast, I'm not sure that this is the best SimCity to try to keep Dark Templar out. He's got that evolution chamber at the natural, but I feel like that six o'clock potentially could be vulnerable with a good Zealot Corsair combo. Yeah, absolutely. And we see everything's kind of stacked here together. This would be the perfect area to kind of hit in the net as well here, right? Just to get as many of these Overlords and Hydra as you can. Oh, Hydra speed, or Overlord speed already done as well, Diggity. Interesting play here from Beast. Yeah, so going pretty rapid Overlord speed. He's got the Hydralisks popping right now. He's got, uh, that looks like defensively bunched them. The Zealot's moving out. Plus one weapons is finished. So uh, right, right around that, this looks like this is going to be that 730 uh, zealot timing, but not finding a lot, and I think there's sufficient hydralisks now at the six o'clock location from Beast, where there's not going to be a lot out of this attack from Motive. He's just going to have to back off. Yeah, we're going to see with this push, he's going to have to have his storm timing done. So hopefully, he's already started storm and is getting ready to go. Can is going down now from Motive because he knows that he cannot hold these hydras just with two, and we're sending the zealots in trying to thin out these hydras. Really good micro here from Beast, pulling things around. Zealots yeah. going down. I like that. Move the Zealots in the way, try to buy time. Uh, and for Beast, honestly, even if he doesn't manage to break this natural expansion, he's forced a lot of cannons to get dropped. Of course, there's Moving up and wow, going for it. The Zealots taking damage as they're separated away from the cannon line. So the Corsair is already able to get two cannons, the third cannon down. Looks like there's one more cannon remaining. The Zealot stranded on the exterior. So now Beast with an overwhelming amount of Hydralis with Psy Storm not yet completed outside of Motive's natural expansion. Yeah, Storm not complete here. Trying to fight with the pros, bringing them out. Zealot's coming down. There's our Storm. First Storm gets no Hydra, softens them up. But will it be enough? Another good Storm going down. He's corporate to the Archon now. Can he hold here? More cannons dropping. We've got that last cannon. It looks like at the natural expansion being taken care of. And we see the continuous movement of Orange across the minimap into the natural. Beast pulling the trigger wants to get the victory here with this. That Archon taking some damage, staggering behind this. And I think Beast might have done it. He's flooding in so many Hydralists. It looks like he's going to be able to breach that natural expansion. Three more cannons, one of them up at the natural. The front completely exposed. The Hydralists pushing in, working on completely popping that Archon, and there's GG from Motive, and Beast has done it with a quick 2-0 victory over Motive. Yeah, man, his aggression pays off. He's able to get there right before the storm timing, really had that build mapped out well, and ran right through Motive. 
And so with that, that is going to be group B. Look forward to uh, group C coming down the line. Um, I think this was unsurprising here. I mean, light exiting in first, and then I, I was expecting Shine actually to go out second, uh, or, to, or to advance second, but yeah, he should be a fun one in the round of 16. Yeah, like I said, he can do anything, so it's really exciting to see him play because it could get wild. Uh, you saw his aggression today. They pay off. He's very calculated. His builds are very calculated, so well done. And and like you said, of course, we had Light go through. We think we kind of knew that he would be the first player to get out of this group with some ease, and uh, he showed that today. He showed his skill. I don't think I'm going to be able to cast Group C, but I think that's going to be a very interesting one for the Foreigner community in particular because you're going to have Royal Walt, Action, and Turbo in that grouping, and it'll be interesting to see DeWalt go up against Royal in particular, uh, just to see what kind of gap there is these days between top level. So DeWalt, very, I think everybody will agree, one of the top three foreigners right now uh, in BSL performances and completions and just uh, his style of play at large. Royal, however, ASL champ, uh, and Action, a very, very strong pro gamer uh, Zerg. So, uh, definitely going to be a test for DeWalt but I'd love to see it and I'd love to see basically I would if DeWalt could win a game the entire for uh, the foreigner community will go berserk and it'll be you know celebration champagne and all that sort of stuff but I think the more likely outcome <laughs> is uh, <laughs> probably going to see uh, royal actions win but it'll be interesting to see how far the gap is right this second yeah absolutely it's you know we're all cheering for DeWalt right he's the one <laughs> guy in the foreign sea that's not Korea that we're like all right man let's go for it so we'll see what he can do uh in that group but you're right that is uh that is not an easy group for sure Oof. For sure. in the meantime uh do you have any final thoughts before we exit here raz uh diggy thanks for uh cast with me today it was fantastic hopefully we'll get some more in the future um it, it was an honor and a pleasure man yeah absolutely love casting with you it was great seeing you at the new york city land and uh yeah, a lot of fun. GG's right here. Really, really good time. All right, everyone. We'll see everyone back here for Group C soon. Tune in to StarCast TV, and we'll talk to everyone later.